The coaching carousel continues, and this time Boston College gets the blowback as Frank Signetti is on the move. We're going to talk all about his new position with Mitch Wolf today on Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. AJ Black, thank you all for listening to our show. Happy Friday, everyone. With me, I have Mitch Wolf. Mitch, how's it going? It's going good. You know, this is a bit of a strange setback at this point in the season, but, you know, it kind of gives us an opportunity to reset. I know some fans weren't super pumped about Signetti at this point, but this will be an interesting uh, kind of flashpoint in Jeff Halfley's career. So let's let's get into that. So on Thursday evening, Pete Thamel, who is the gold standard on breaking news, broke that Frank Signetti is about to become the offensive coordinator at Pitt. Um, at the time of this recording, it hasn't been officially announced yet, but whenever Thamel posts is usually always going to happen. So it's, it's just a foregone conclusion. He's probably, you know, signing the contract and dotting his eyes and crossing his T's at this point. So Signetti is heading to Pitt. This is a position he's held before about 10 years ago. Um, and I think that's where he met Jeff Halfley, correct? Yeah, I was actually when I was doing some research into possible new candidates, I, that was where they met. Um, they've had they've worked together a few places, actually. Um, but, yeah, I mean, some might consider this a lateral move in a vacuum because you're going from one kind of, uh, you know, mid tier AC program to one that's maybe a little better. But, you know, he's from Pittsburgh. His whole family is from that area. Um, so it's kind of a homecoming for him. Um, you know, Pitt had a great this this great year this year with Kenny Pickett. They're getting Keaton Slovis in from USC. So that's going to be a pretty explosive offense as well. So it's not really, I wouldn't say it's a slight to BC. It's more of just him being like, Hey, like I get to be closer to home and my family and everything. So, you know, yeah. like a lot of these transfers, it's not, I don't think it's super indicative or, you know, a negative reaction to Boston college. I'm sure. And I'm sure Halfley's happy for him. And yeah. It's just the right move to do. Right. So let's talk a little bit about Signetti's tenure. Cause I think it's, it's a controversial one, which I wouldn't have never said would have been the case before the 2021 season, but it's worth talking about. So 2020, he gets hired and immediately he makes a splash with Boston college as he is one of the prime recruiters for Phil Dracovic, uh, bringing him in. I know Dracovic talked at length that their Pittsburgh roots were um, very important in terms of their connection with each other. You being a, uh, a, a Pennsylvania person yourself, Mitch, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, so my family, a lot of my family's from Pittsburgh. That's why I'm a Steelers fan. And it is like a very just family oriented um area like it's it's a very small world out there like everybody knows each other seemingly like you can make a lot of connections um just kind of jumping like one or two degrees of separation um so you know Jerkovic is from Pine Richland which is a you know high, it's a powerhouse of a high school program um I think Phil won the state championship his senior year um Pine Richland's a really good school uh, and then Signetti obviously uh his there, uh, his dad was a major coaching figure out there. Um, Frank and Kurt, who's currently the head coach at uh, James Madison, were both, you know, part of the high school program, high school coaching uh, circuit there. So, you know, that, there's probably just a lot of intertwining there. I'm sure the Signetti's ran some camps that Dracovic went to, and that's kind of where they made those connections. So he brings in Dracovic, you know, the blue chip recruit from Notre Dame. And immediately they start this offense off. And what, what struck me when he first started uh, that offense was that he cleaned up Dracovic's game, but also turned uh, Steve Adazio's to, you know, he can't stop talking about Daz, but we'll, we will hear <laughs> his ground and pound offense from 2019 into what essentially became like almost an air raid offense because they had no running game in 2020. Uh, you know, Dracovic, he's throwing all over the place. They get Zay Flowers going. They got Hunter Long going. CJ Lewis has a big year. And, you know, they win six games out of uh, uh, out of uh, out of 11. Um, but what was your kind of thoughts about the offense in his first year at Boston College? My biggest takeaway was that it was just a lot more modernized. Like, even in the later Daz years, you know, they kind of incorporated some motion stuff. But it was mostly just kind of jet sweeps for the sake of jet sweeps. Like, there wasn't really point to a lot of it but the new offense incorporated a lot of motion that that helps the quarterback identify what uh, coverage the defense is using pre-snap um, obviously sometimes it gives the receivers advantages coming off the line because you can't get pressed when you're you know running so that's a big help um, and just a lot of the concepts were 
you know, per, like professional NFL style concepts, not as much kind of college gimmicky stuff that you saw under Steve Adazio. Like one example, and the NFL does this a little bit, but not the extent that Daz did it was just this, the sprint out concept where you have the quarterback just gets the snap and then just runs to the right. And then there's basically two routes there, you know, does love that concept because it's easy, but if you're playing a superior opponent, they cover it well. And with Signetti, you know, I've talked a lot about this, like using like those deep shot concepts, um, uh, you know, some sale concepts, a lot of more just, you know, stuff you're seeing in the NFL game today, which was a big reason why the offense was so successful because, because, and, you know, players like Hunter Long and say Flowers helped that as well, but you have these NFL players running NFL schemes and that gives you an advantage over most college defenses. And so then we go into 2021 and first of all, he helped recruit. I know some people have been asking, who did he recruit? Peter Delaportis, the, uh, the quarterback commitment for the class of 2022, he was the main recruiter for him, and he was the first commitment of that class. So uh, Signetti grabs his you know, quarterback of the future for Boston College, which he won't coach. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> he, you know, he comes in, high expectations. Jakovic goes down, and then everything goes to crap. Um, and you know, I think a lot of fans were frustrated with him with his inability to, they said, they, they would quote, inability to adjust uh, to the injury to Djokovic. I kind of push back a little bit here because when you don't have a quarterback, when you have a quarterback that can't throw the ball 15 yards down the field, you can't run the ball and you can't throw the, like the short and intermediate stuff. You think about it more and more, the safeties can just cheat up all the time. So the short and intermediate stuff is not going to be there if all defenses are just, focusing on 15 yards of fields. And so the offense, but whatever the case, the offense doesn't work. And we have a tough October, you know, Jakovic comes back. He's not really clicking um, as his hands still clearly affecting him. What were your, what were your big takeaways of Signetti's coaching in 2021? I think I would agree with some of those frustrations about not being able to adjust the offense. I, I do agree with your take somewhat as well, though, because, you know, at, at the end of the day, there is only so much you can change with your offense. You know, there is kind of a set playbook and set concept. You don't want to kind of completely overhaul what you're doing in the middle of the season. Um, and but but with that being said, you know, I think that there were still ideas and concepts they didn't really seem to incorporate uh, in during that month of October, that would have made life easier for Dennis Grossell. You know, they still had him, you know, trying to uh, execute a lot of those deep shots. Uh, they try, and in the way they were running them, there just wasn't anything new added on to them to either give him more time. And, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of it was Grossell just not being able to execute as well. Um, but I, I do appreciate like him being able to kind of in, introduce a more modern uh professional style offense to this team whereas they were kind of stuck in the dark ages under the previous administration so I, I think that it's kind of a stepping stone a bit for the bc offense um and i'm i'm excited to see who they're going to get into in the next era so speaking of that in a moment mitch and i are going to talk about some candidates that you're going to want to know about so in a moment you'll want to hear mitch says he's has got about a dozen so we'll hear about all the offensive coordinators boston college could be looking at for 2022 Hey, Eagles fans, this is AJ Black with an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about, Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use promo code SCORE and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download that app and use promo code SCORE to get up to 50 cents per gallon. Some people who drive a lot are making up as much up to two to three hundred dollars a month in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime using your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift cards for Amazon and other brands. Just make sure to download the GetUpside app and use promo code SCORE. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Go to Bet Online, where the game starts. 
This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. I'm joined by my co-writer, Mitch Wolf from BC Bulletin. He joins us all the time to talk about football. And today we are talking about Frank Sidetti, the offensive coordinator for Boston College, who is reportedly on his way to the Pitt Panthers. Now, in the first segment, we talked about his last two seasons with the Eagles. You know, he's had a long career and has moved around a lot. and He's going to continue moving as he heads off to the Panthers. Now it's time to talk about where Boston College goes from here. And Mitch, I know you have been doing some research. Who are some of the names of that you're going to be looking for? Yeah, and I mean, it, honestly, this was really this was a kind of a really fun project to come up at the last second because you get to do all this research about um, you know Jeff Halfley's history and who he's worked with, and there's been some really incredible staffs he's been a part of. But I'll start with the two quote internal candidates. So the one that we assume is going to take the job on an interim basis, assuming they don't. Uh, bringing an outside hire would be Joe Daly, who has served as the wide receivers coach for the last few years. Obviously, you know, he's helped develop Zay Flowers, Jalen Gill, Jaden Williams even, uh, made them big-time players for this team. And he's had experience being an offensive coordinator before. He was at Liberty for um, a, a, a number of years, and he was the quarterback's coach and the offensive coordinator there. And they've had they had some really impressive offenses there. Um, and I think that, you know, if they want him to pull double duty like Signetti did in terms of a – coordinator and quarterbacks coach he has the experience doing that coaching quarterbacks at liberty and uh buffalo and kansas i believe um or sorry at bethune cookman and might not have been quarterbacks at buffalo uh but anyway so he has been a quarterbacks coach before and he's he played quarterback in college so he'd be comfortable doing that that's kind of the presumptive hire i would say um the other one would be rob jadinsky who is a name that might seem familiar to some nfl fans uh, he was the head coach of the browns for the 2013 season then they fired him after one year because they're the Browns, uh, but he's been an offensive coordinator. Uh, he's been a tight ends coach for the NFL for a very long time. Um, for the last two years, he's been the special assistant to Jeff Halfley at Boston College. Um, so, you know, he's been kind of, this has kind of been a weird role for him, but I think they kind of had him in there in case there was somebody who left and they can uh, promote him to this next job. And he would be somebody I wouldn't be surprised to see take that job. Um, he was the offensive coordinator for Cam Newton's first two years with the Panthers. He was the offense coordinator associate head coach for the Colts from 2014 to 2017. So, you know, think about Cam Newton and your luck. Some of those skill sets are pretty similar to what Phil Jerkovic has. So those are the two in-house hires, I would say, are pretty likely at this point. So with the Chudnitsky thing, I want to to add a little nugget to that I just thought was interesting was for the last three weeks, he'd, he'd been the, he, there was a lot of buzz, you know, he's a Miami guy. He played for Miami um, that he was going to return and join Mario Cristobal's uh, staff. I know he's friends with Mario and apparently he, re- he uh, turned down that offer to stay with BC, which mm-hmm. again, with all this news, I'm like, Hmm, I wonder if there's any, uh, anything to that. I heard from what I, some of the things I've read, it was because he just, he's comfortable up in Massachusetts and just didn't want to pick up his family and move again, but maybe there's other things there too. So that's just something interesting to think about as well. Now, Mitch going outside of the team, who are some names that you have found that have connections to Halfley that might be worth looking at? So right now I would say in terms of guys that are not with the team and I'm just kind of connecting dots right now, I'd say the leader in the clubhouse is Brian Angelico or Angelicio. It's a bit of a complicated name, but he is currently the Carolina Panthers tight ends coach. And he's been there for the last two years. But the key part is that he was on the university of Pittsburgh staff in 2006 with Jeff Halfley as an offensive assistant and their tight ends coach. And they have been together as coaches uh, basically from 2006 until 2015, they were at Pitt Rutgers, Tampa Bay and Cleveland together. So they've been, at a lot of stops together, you know, they're probably very close. Um, in last few years, uh, Angeli Chio has been the Packers, the Reds, sorry, Washington football team and the Panthers tight ends coach. So he's had a lot of experience there. Um, so he's somebody they could bring in as offensive coordinator. He hasn't been a coordinator yet, um, but he could be kind of looking to make that jump. So that would be something to look into. He's so based on those connections, I would say he's the big one. In terms of kind of the high profile one that I think is pretty unlikely, it's uh, Brian Hartline, who is the wide receivers coach and passing game coordinator at Ohio State. And, you know, if you know anything about Ohio State football last few years, they've been arguably wide receiver U. They've put a dozen receivers in the NFL during um, Hartline's time there. And he's only been there since 2017, but they've just been churning out great NFL caliber wide receivers. Um, There's still, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigbo who had 
the arguably the greatest wide receiver game ever in the Rose Bowl. Um, and he's there's kind of taught been talk about him for at least the last two years about, you know, kind of becoming an offense coordinator somewhere or jumping up to being a head coach. So, you know, if BC could get him, that would be a huge coup. I don't think it's likely. Um, a more likely one would be Corey Dennis, who is in his second year as the quarterback's coach for Ohio State, or this was his second year. Um, you know, he might be somebody they want to just bring in as a QB coach, um, where he can kind of it seems like there's kind of a lot of split duties at Ohio State. So he might kind of want to get his own uh a command there and just kind of go off on his own. Um, one name that might seem familiar to BC fans is Bob Bicknell, who is the younger brother of, or sorry, he's the son of Jack Bicknell, who was uh, the former Boston college head coach a long time ago. Um, and he was most recently the wide receivers coach for the Cincinnati Bengals from 2018 through 2020. So he's somebody that I could see them looking into given the, uh, the connection there. Um, some other, ones that are kind of connected to Halfley would be one would be Dowell Loggins. Um, he's been in the NFL for a long time. Uh, they were together in Cleveland in 2014. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty loose connection, but right now he's only the tight ends coach at Arkansas. He's been there for one year. So I'm wondering if they could bring him in as an offensive coordinator. Um, I think he also would probably know, he might know Chudzinski too. So that would be another connection. Um, but yeah, those are probably my leaders in the clubhouse in terms of connections to Halfley right now. All right. So Prediction time. We're, you know, an hour. We're recording this like an hour and a half after we found out the news. If if you were to rub the crystal ball and make a choice, Mitch, who will be the offensive coordinator in twenty twenty two? Unfortunately, I think it's going to be pretty boring. I think they'll probably just promote Daly. Um, I, I, I think there's an. I would say like it's maybe like sixty percent Daly, maybe like thirty five percent Chudzinski, five um, percent the field. <laughs> yeah, uh, to kind of cop out there, but. I think they're going to want to keep this one in house. You know, maybe I think there's been some talk about, you know, promoting daily to OC uh, maybe make him a quarterback's coach as well. Then you put Rich Gannell back with the wide receivers where he's most comfortable. And then um, either promote somebody else to coach the running backs or maybe go out and find somebody else there. Sim- uh, Simon Huggins there. Okay. Uh, he was just an assistant right now. I think he's, he's a running backs coach. So I would assume he would just take it. Okay. I was looking for him on the website and couldn't find it. So, but yeah, yeah, he, so if, you know, promote him and he takes over that role. So I think they'll kind of just promote from within here, um, which is kind of disappointing, but you know, that is good to see. They have a culture of uh, having good coaches there who, you know, know the guys. Well, Um, one other name I do want to mention is kind of an outside the box hire would be Ron Whitcomb. He's the tight ends coach at Buffalo. um, And he had spent the previous 12 seasons as the quarterbacks coach at old dominion. Uh, it's kind of an outside the box hire, but Old Dominion's had a pretty explosive offense. Uh, he actually coached Taylor Heineke, and Whitcomb played football at Maine in the early 2000s. So he's the kind of an up and coming coach that's a pretty hot name uh, among like kind of group of five position coaches. So if they wanted to make him an offense coordinator and give him that uh, kind of jump up to the next level, he'd be one name to keep an eye on in the near future. And I, I just going back to your prediction, I'm going to agree with you. I've I've said all along I think it's going to be daily, and it's just going to be some in, um, some um, you know, promotions within for those other positions. So yeah, uh, Mitch, where can people find you? You were going to come on today. We're going to talk about the senior bowl. And stuff. <laughs> and I was like, all right, audible time. We're going to yeah, talk we got about news. We else. got news to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can f- go. go ahead. Okay. You can find me at Mitchell T Wolf, W O L F E. Um, like AJ said, you know, we're kind of getting that scouting season. The, the postseason all-star bowl game circuit is starting this weekend. Uh, we'll probably talk about that next week. Um, but yeah, and I, I posted some of my scouting reports for this upcoming cycle. Um, it's been two quarterbacks so far, uh, but I'll be doing the ACC and AAC uh, for around the block.net. So, you know, I'll be getting the BC guys. I'll probably do the cross check, let some other people get their own crack at them first, but uh, make sure you're following me on Twitter there and you'll be able to find all my work. All right, Mitch. Well, thank you for having me on in a moment. We're going to talk all about the news that doesn't involve Frank Signetti. So stay tuned for all of that. It's a new year, and if you're making New Year's resolutions, make sure that Built Bar is part of your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, and it may be even better. It's 100% covered in chocolate, and it is so good, you're going to want to eat it. I I eat a Built Bar every day. I had one of the, this afternoon. I had a coconut almond. It was delicious. Nice and chilled. It was perfect. The best part about Built Bars, you eat them. You don't feel guilty afterwards because listen to what's inside. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. That's going to give you the energy you need to make it through the day. Now, when you head to Built.com, check out their specialty flavors. They have a ton that you can choose from, or you can go for the OG flavors like coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, and much more. 
Built Bar is always coming out new ones, so you want to check that out. Now head to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black here. Thank you all for listening. Mitch is headed out. We're going to talk a little bit about news here and talk a little bit some of the, some of the things that are going on in the world of Boston College you're going to want to know about. First of all, in NHL hockey news, the uh, Olympics are coming up and the NHL is, is staying out, so it's going to be a lot of college players, and two Boston College players have made the U.S. Olympic team. That is defenseman Drew Hellison and forward Mark McLaughlin. Now, the the uh, Olympics are coming up in just about a month. You're going to want to check that out. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch and see a couple Boston College players in the Olympics. I know there's a couple on the women's hockey team as well. I don't have their names in front of me, but congratulations to all involved, and hopefully they'll all bring home some gold. Speaking of gold, let's talk about the women's basketball team that are playing like gold. Again, they won their third straight ACC game, beating Pitt on Wednesday, or Thursday, excuse me. It was a 75-64 win over a Pitt team that is 0-5 in the ACC. So, again, a win you need to get. They, they, they took care of business. Uh, three players on Boston College uh, led the team with 14 points. Maria Gagdang, who has been you know three-time ACC Freshman of the Week, had 14 points and five blocks. Uh, Cam Schwartz, fresh off a 39-point output against Clemson, had 14 points. And then Michaela Dickens had 14 points as well. Again, when you can win and do it a million different ways, your team is set. Like, if this team was just going with Taylor Soul as your only, you know, lead option to win, they're not that talented enough to do that. Like, that's not, like, what you want. Taylor Soul can't just lead your team. But they are so nicely well-rounded that they're going to win some big games. And... They're starting to get some, you know, they're going to start getting some attention. You know, they've won three straight ACC games, four games in a row. Next game's going to be real tough, though, because they're going to play Louisville again. You know, Louisville was their last loss. They lost by 30 points. Louisville, excuse me, is the number two slash three team in the country. They're going to get them at home this time. I don't know if they're going to have an answer to win that game, but that'll be uh, coming up in... um, but congratulations to the women who are now um, twelve and four. So they, you know, a win against Louisville that is going to set up as a magical season, but it's going to be a lot of work. So that is also a piece of news. And then football news. Uh, just looking at former Boston College players in the coaching ranks, Al Washington was let go by Ohio State. I don't know if it was a complete firing. It wasn't like he wasn't doing his job. It sounds like. But they brought in a new defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles from Oklahoma State, who was their defensive coordinator slash linebacker coach, which is the position that uh, Al Washington coaches. So they had it was kind of redundant. Al Washington is gone. Al Washington, if you remember, was a defensive lineman in the early 2000s for Boston College. He was the running backs coach, special teams coach, and uh, for BC before he headed off to Cincinnati, Michigan, and Ohio State. He's going to find a new job. Whether it's going to be in college or the pros, I don't know what his goal is in life. I don't to talk to him because uh, he was, you know, he was a coach before I started covering him like that. But you know, he'll find a job, and there'll be plenty of NFL jobs if that's what he's interested in doing. College jobs, the coaching carousel has been spinning pretty quickly, so I don't know if he's going to be able to find anything there. But I don't expect him to come to Boston College. He's not going to come to BC. Like, for those of you out there that are like, oh, Al Washington, we'll just fire Tem Lokabu. That's not going to happen. And that's not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, Tem Lokabu's done a nice job with the defense. Um, he's, you know, they're improving every single year. So they're not going to fire him. And Al Washington's not going to go to a school like Boston College and take a job as, like, you know, anything less than like a coordinator position at this point. So he's not coming back to Boston College unless there's like a big change. Like someone poaches Lokabu. Then you could talk about Al Washington. But given where they're at right now, I just don't see it happening. So on Monday, we're going to talk all about the games of the weekend. Hockey has games. You know, men's basketball will be back in action. We'll get into all of that on Monday. Thank you all for listening. You can follow me on Twitter at AJBlack underscore BC. You can follow the Twitter account of the site at BC Bulletin. And you can follow at LockedOnBC. Make sure to follow us on YouTube as well. I am going to announcement here. I We have a YouTube channel. I have to admit, I'm not good at getting the, the shows up at a regular time. They're going to premiere every single day. This is my my promise to you. Every single day at 7 a.m. You can get your episode of Locked on BC at YouTube 
at seven. Just there'll be a premiere button. Just hit that play button and you'll get it. Okay. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you all again soon. Take care everyone and stay warm.